We are here in the tunnel of the LHC. Uh, the, these are the two beam pipes. One beam goes in this direction, and the other beam goes opposite in the other direction. The intersection point is 220 meters away on this side. With STOTEM, we have two detectors which are at the intersection point to measure all the particles which come out in the forward direction. But here, we have some special detectors which measure protons which are very close uh, to, the, uh, to the beam pipe. You see, the beam here is, uh, has a size of a millimeter or so, and we go with our detectors here in the forward direction very close to the beam pipe within one millimeter. You can imagine with such intensive beam that is not an easy task to do. Uh, we have to do that because we want to measure the protons which escape in an elastic interaction which escapes the beam pipe, but they are only one millimeter away. So the angles are typically micro radians, very, very small. For this, we have special environments where the detectors are in, in which the detectors we can move back and forth. And these you see here, and these you see there. Because not only we want to measure the position of the protons very close to the beam, but also we want to measure their angle because these particles are very parallel to the beam, so you need a large lever arm of typically four meters to be able to measure the angle very closely. So that's the reason why we are 220 meters away from the intersection point. TOTEM is a small experiment compared to the big ones like ATSAS and CMS. Uh, we have about 180 to 100 physicists working at the experiment. Uh, many of them are now here. Uh, nationalities, there are three Italian group, two American group, of course CERN is a big group also. Then there is uh, Estonia, Finland, Hungary, and of course also Prague. What is special in TOTEM is that we would like to measure the total cross-section, namely the probability that two protons interact with each other. This has a long history at CERN because the first discovery were done at the ISR more than 50 years ago when people recognized that the total cross-section is increasing with energy. And that's also relevant for the cosmic ray interpretation where you need these total cross-section measurements. Now, the other part of TOTEM is that we want to measure uh, interactions where the two protons mainly go forward, either they scatter elast uh, elastically like you do in billiard, for example, you, they touch each other very slightly, or they lose a little bit of momentum and then you produce new particles, you have a smaller interaction because the protons take the whole energy in these two beam pipes in the forward direction and you have a few gluons making an interaction, it's almost like a glue, glue, glue machine. Here you see the masterpiece for measuring the protons in the forward direction. These, are, these elements which you see here are called Roman pots. That's a historical re reminder on the first measurements which were done by the Romans at the ISR. Now, uh, other people say it's a cooking, a Roman pot cooking, different interpretations. Now, in these pots you need, because you have to enter into the beam pipe here, there's only a very small uh, piece of 200 micron which separates our detectors from the beam pipe. Now, once you're close into the beam pipe, you have to move the detectors up and down because when you inject the beams, you have to be away, otherwise you will destroy everything. And then you go as close as one millimeter. So what happens is that the detectors are inside here, there and there, and also here. And I'll explain you why we have three. And then they move very close to the beam on a level of 10 micron precision and close to one millimeter to the beam. And you know that the beam is very intense and it's a, a real challenge to do that. Now, uh, we cannot open that for you because this is the final installation. I show you uh, what kind of detectors are in there. These are silicon detectors which have no edge here in first approximation and which move up and down like that with 10, 20 micron precision. Now the precision to detect a particle in that silicon is the order of 10, 20 micron. So it's a high level thing. Now, you don't have only one plane, you have 10 planes because you need redundancy. Now, why do we have horizontal and vertical ones? That is clear because 
the elastic scattered pro uh, protons will go up and down. That's the optics of the machine. And you will measure up and down here. Uh, you will measure one proton on this side and 440 meters away, two times 220 meter, at the other side of the intersection. And you will make a coincidence having a proton here and a proton on the other side. Now, this here, they go in this direction, the proton, because they've lost a little bit of its momentum. And due to the dispersion of the machine, the protons will go here. Again, the same thing. You go very close to the beam. And these are the diffractive thing, because diffraction is one of the main issues which we would like to measure with total. And all, all together, we want to measure the total cross-section. I don't want to go in details, but to measure the total cross-section, you have to have also detectors at the intersection point, uh, which we call T1 and T2, and these are big chambers, which see all the rest, which goes in the forward direction, all the particles, typically 20, 50 particles, go in the forward direction. So you make a coincidence, you measure there at the intersection point, and you measure the protons here in the forward direction. This is very specialized, and uh, I have to say, it's the first time that with this high precision, we, have, uh, we can measure that, because we have already... Uh, done this kind of physics over 50 years, but never with this kind of precision. How it looks inside of the proton, we don't know much. The proton may change with velocity. So if the energy is higher, the proton may be completely different than if you have a proton at rest. So we don't know much what is inside if the proton interacts as a whole. And that is one of the things which we are going to study. Of course, the big experiments make pattern pattern scattering to produce new particles very, very detailed. But the global feature of the proton, we don't know so well. The second thing is the total cross section. The probability that two protons interact, dependent at which energy they are. Now, as I said, that has been discovered at the ISR first, that the total cross section is rising. But this is a very important part because what happens with a proton when it gets energy, it becomes larger. That's the first thing. The second what happens is it becomes darker. So if it is darker, it has more interaction probability. Clear, if it becomes larger, it has more interaction probability. So it's a very important point to see how the cross-section increases with energy in itself, to understand the proton which, which goes with a very high velocity or which has a very high energy. On the other hand, it's also important for cosmic ray studies. Remember, uh, uh, for example, the OJ experiment is uh, measuring protons or other particles coming in our atmosphere, and they claim that they may see point-like structures. But then these point-like structures should be protons, otherwise they cannot be point-like. So again, and to identify whether these are protons or whether these are iron or other elements, you have to know the total cross-section because you have to know where it starts in the atmosphere. Okay, so it's a very important part. Also, there are theories how this cross-section will rise with energy, and there's even a limit, the Froissart bound, that the cross-section cannot rise faster than a certain value. So to measure that precisely is important, but it's also very difficult. Many measurements have been done, and even some of them are conflicting measurements. So we want to do that at the highest energy, and at a certain point, maybe we can go down a little bit with energy to compare to the results which have been obtained before. The machine will run uh, definitely next year for physics. Let's assume it's clean. Then the first thing I want to see is the elastic scattering of two protons. So uh, that itself is something where the theory gives you predictions which differ by four orders of magnitude, depending what the momentum between the two protons is. First thing to measure. Second thing to measure, again based on two protons, is that we want to see when the proton loses momentum. So they are here. Because this is what I said before, this pomeron pomeron interaction on both sides, the proton loses a little bit of its momentum, gives it to the pomeron, and they will produce a mass. And this mass distribution, we can also measure very well at the beginning. Then, when we get our special optics, which we need to do this experiment, then we will start immediately to measure the total cross-section, maybe, hopefully, still next year, with a precision which is not ultimate, will be 10%, and over the years it will be improved, depending whether the optics of the machine will also be improved. So, we are very eager to be the first to get some good physics results.